I'm Tim Carter, and this is the S the Builder live stream for today, January 27th, 2022. I'm glad you're here, and it's a pleasure to uh, to have you watch the live stream, even if you're watching it when it's not live, as that happens. And my goal is to hopefully uh, share some information with you that will save you time and money. And if you really want to do that, I highly recommend that you go to my askthebuilder.com website and right on the homepage, uh, sign up for my free newsletter. It uh, comes out every Sunday. And like, for example, I, I author it usually on Friday mornings. I have a lot of fun. It's a really fun thing to do. I share a lot of stories about what happens to me during the week and Probably the quirkiest newsletter you'll ever get is about the way I can describe it. But guaranteed, each issue, you're going to save money. Guaranteed. Uh, for example, over the past month, uh, my subscribers, thousands of them took advantage of this. Um, I basically packaged up all of my digital products, about 110 or 120 things. Crazy. A lot of PDF files, a lot of videos. And package them all up. Normally, if you buy them by themselves at the shopping cart, you'd spend over $1,200, but you can buy them for 49 bucks. You know, crazy. So you still do it right now, actually. In fact, I'll give you the link to it right now in case you're interested. Um, I um, I thought I had a pull here. I had something else, actually. I had the uh, roofing um, contractor checklist and... Um, that's actually one of the things you get in the digital library. So if you're getting ready to, um, if you're getting ready to put in a roof on your home, you're going to get this as part of the package, and it helps you find the best roofer in your city or town. But if you go there, if you go to that link right now, uh, that is where you can get the digital library, my entire library, for just uh, forty nine bucks. It's, a, it's just an incredible deal. It really is. If you've got a question about your home. I don't care what it is. I don't care what kind of question it is flooring, tile, drywall, um, you name it. Um, put it in the chat. Love to help you. And uh, so let's get started on the uh, brick and mortar. <laughs> what can happen sometimes, I, I don't get into the main topic of the live stream for many, many minutes, and that's a mistake because you might be, have tuned into the live stream or after the fact you know, to, to hear about brick and mortar. Brick and mortar, uh, it's really a big topic. Uh, tens of thousands of people uh, a month look into this topic online and they ask all kinds of different questions. And it's really kind of interesting because some people, you know, the problem that I have, I think, is that I easily fall into this trap where I just kind of assume that everybody knows, not so much knows everything that I know, but that they have a more basic understanding of things. And But a lot of people ask, what is brick and mortar? It's, it's as if they don't even know. And it's really kind of an interesting question when you think about it. You know, there there could be people who, who really don't have a clue and for any number of reasons. And, and you start to wonder, at least from what I'm seeing in my email, more and more people are not getting a background in home repairs and how homes are built from their from their mom and dads than used to. And as a result, they just don't even know. So brick and mortar. Brick are, well, you know what? There's one right there, right behind me. So let me get it and I'll show you what a brick is. So this is actually a pretty standard brick. You can see about how big it is compared to my hand. It's really a uh, paving brick. This is a brick that you that's meant to put in the ground and weather. And I actually had this one made. Um, they, they, they did the letters with a, a laser, a, a high-powered laser that actually melted the clay to create that, that black glass. So it's that's melted rock. And it's really very, very durable. I mean, this would last hundreds of years outside. But this is a brick, and it's made from clay. And 
my daughter, for example, my daughter does a lot of pottery and clay. Maybe you, you know, you, maybe you've, you've played with Play-Doh, you know, things that are similar to clay. So clay is typically very soft. Uh, you can form it and you have to let it dry. And then you have to, what we call bisque fire it. Uh, to, so you don't crack it. And then, th then you put it into a kiln and you get the temperature up pretty high. Uh, you might get the temperature up near 2000 degrees. And what happens is the clay, the, the mineralogy of the clay actually changes a little bit. And the, 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 the soft clay, which, which you, in other words, think about this clay, regular clay, like a clay deposit, you can dissolve it water, meaning you can get clay on your hands and you can wash it off with water, all right? So that's that's interesting. Think about that. But once the brick, once you take the clay and you fire it and you get it up to temperature and you leave it up to temperature for a little bit and then you slowly bring it back down, it's changed. Meaning you can take the brick, the clay, the quote unquote clay, you can put it in a bucket of water and it's not going to dissolve. I mean, you could leave it in the bucket of water for a thousand years. Because what's happened is the heat changed the mineralogy and changed it from a water-soluble product to one that's not. It changed it into a rock. Basically, it's man-made rock. And you can make brick from concrete. You can typically make it from clay. Clay is the, the most common material to use for brick because it's so inexpensive. I mean, clay is... I mean, people who have land who own land that has clay deposits on it the clay was put there for free by mother nature now there's all different types of clay that's really really important to know and the clay mineralogy is completely different the clays that have a higher silica content are you know when when you fire them that they are stronger brick and um and also the higher you fire the brick and the longer you fire it the harder the brick gets. Some brick can get so hard that you can use them, like this one for paving brick. You can go to Athens, Ohio, for example, and the streets of Athens, Ohio, 100, 140 years ago, were paved with brick. That's what they used. And they still have a small section of downtown Athens that they have left the brick exposed. And some of those brick have been down for over 100 years subjected to all types of traffic, um, snowstorms, ice, you name it. And the brick look, you know, they look in really good condition. <clears throat> so when you put brick on a house, you know, if you do, if you put the right brick up, it's going to last a long time. I mean, if it's put in right. Remember, if you are new to this, if you're new to the stream and you want to ask a question about anything, it can be about brick and mortar if you want. But if you want to ask a question about anything else, just type it in the chat stream. That's what I'm here for. We don't, you know, I don't intend to talk about a brick and mortar the entire live stream. I'll talk about anything you want to talk about. The Let's talk a little bit now about mortar. The mortar that is used for brick is typically just a blend of sand and all sand is is generally, it's just tiny, tiny, tiny pieces of rock. And sometimes it can be tiny pieces of seashell. And that's okay, because seashell is basically limestone, which is very, very hard, very, very durable. And then you mix the sand with Portland cement, and it's best if you add some hydrated lime. In fact, today I got an email from a, an older gentleman he had read my, a recent column of mine about brick and mortar, and he he shared a little story about how when he was a, a young boy, 12 to 13 years old, that he, um, actually, I'll, I'll read it because it's, um, it's really interesting. I just love getting emails like this. Um, I just love it. And uh, here it is. He go, his name is David uh, Colander. He lives in Libertyville, Illinois. And he said, as a 12 to 13-year-old lad, I labored for my bricklayer dad who belonged to the local Mason Union. He made extra money for the family on regular weekend scab jobs for friends and neighbors, building garages, fireplace, and additions. I soon was their go-to guy for mixing mortar and a mortar box trough using a big hoe with large holes in it. Yeah, that's, that's a very common hoe to use. My instructions were two shovels of Portland cement, 
one shovel of hydrated lime. That's really important. Most bricklayers don't use that today, and they should. So two shovels of Portland cement, one shovel of hydrated lime, 10 shovels of sand, and the needed water to make it the consistency of applesauce. That's the best consistency for mortar. My dad told me the lime was to make it easier to clean the brickwork when the work was all set and finished. According to him, the muriatic acid solution we brushed on the bricks with wouldn't work to get off mortar smears unless the lime was in the mortar to react with the acid. This may be an old wives' tale, but who knew? They were strengthening the mortar. Thanks for the article. The, he's wrong about that, just so you know. So he, I, I, I uh, politely told him that was not the case. Uh, in other words, I told him the lime does not make it easier uh, to, to get the smears off. Uh, what the lime does is makes the mortar really sticky, which is a good thing. Uh, because all that hydrated lime is, is once you mix it with water, you basically are creating liquid or plastic limestone. So if you, if you know anything about limestone, it's a really durable rock. This is why whitewash is such a great material. In other words, when you mix hydrated lime with water and you make whitewash, um, it and you you paint it on brick or whatever, that coating will last for for decades. I mean, it's it's because you're just painting on rock. It's crazy. All right. Remember, if you've got a question about your house, uh, anything that you you have, a problem that you have with your home, whatever it might be, just put it in the chat. I'm happy to answer it. And um, we'll um, uh, I'll try to save you some time and money. Now, mortar. Here's some things that you don't want to do with mortar. Here's what you need to understand about mortar with brick. When you when you uh, remember all that the mortar is, it's sand. Portland cement, and hopefully you're going to add some lime. When you add water to the Portland cement and the lime, you start a chemical reaction. And this is really important to understand. You start a chemical reaction. It's called hydration. And um, the it's in other words, just think of how concrete. If you've seen concrete come out of a truck, it's a plastic material. You know, meaning it's you can move it around, but all of a sudden, in a matter of time, and it depends on a number of factors, the concrete becomes hard. So why does that happen? The concrete becomes hard because as soon as you mix the water with the Portland cement, you start the chemical reaction and billions and billions of and trillions of tiny microscopic crystals start to form. And these crystals are just like Velcro. And they interlock the sand and the rock together to make the hard concrete. Well, the same thing happens with mortar. That means that if your mortar starts to get a little stiff, you really don't want to add any water to it because you break apart some of those, those crystals and you weaken the mortar. It, so it's best that you just mix enough mortar that you can use in the time frame that it doesn't start to stiffen up. And I know that's kind of hard to understand maybe, but you you know, that that's one of the reasons, like if you see mortar that's crumbling or whatever, it's, it's possibility that they added water to it as it was getting stiff and it fractures many, many of those crystal, crystal bonds. Simple as that. Let's get caught up on the comments. Tech support says shoreline deck. I live in Western New York, okay. And my backyard has access to the Erie Canal. Okay, great, great, uh, great canal. And I like, I'd like to build a shoreline deck for the kids. Not sure how to start. Well, that's a great question. So the first thing you need to do is, as much as I hate to say it, uh, you have to go to your local government office and you need to find out if you're even allowed to do it. I mean, are there, you know, you need to find out if your zoning will let you do it. Are there special... For example, here in New Hampshire, where I live, I live on a lake, which would be similar to the canal, and we have a thing called the Shoreline Protection Act, all right? So you have to work within that law. So that's your first step. Once you cross over that barricade, meaning if you find out it's okay to build, uh, then you probably are going to have to submit a plan, and you're going to have to uh, get it approved. And as far as coming up with a plan, oh, well, that could be a little difficult. 
I offer phone coaching. So I have helped people do this. Uh, I can help you a little bit with the design. Um, your local town might have some very simplistic uh, guidelines to help you to show what the minimum requirements are for a deck like this. Uh, it, it, there's, there's so many different options. So first of all, just go find out if you can build the deck, find out how big you can build the deck, how, how big you're legally allowed to do it, and then take those necessary steps. And if you need my help, just go to my shopping cart and you can see the consult Tim thing. I'm happy to get on a 15 minute phone call with you. Rob says, I'm very happy to report that I had almost no problems with the Nordob installation. I decided not, not, not to rekey and use a different brand. Good for you. Good for you. That was a great, um, that was a great idea. Hello, simulator from Northern Ireland. Uh, tell me about the weather there today. Uh, tell me about the, um, what's it like in Northern Ireland today? Um, Rob says, my question is whether I have to be careful about fiberglass that's kind of exposed. Should I send you a picture in D? It says, well, you could, Rob. Um, you could send me a quick photo. Um, it, who knows? We, it may cross over into a quick 15-minute consult. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be too ex ex uh, ex worried about any exposed fiberglass. Uh, you know, your biggest challenge would be to take, um, you know, an artist brush. See these artist brushes? You know, you might have to get a little bit of stain and very carefully, very carefully stain that part that's exposed to match whatever you have now, or maybe the door's painted. But I mean, fiberglass is, I mean, it's its pretty weather resistant. So I, I'm not really concerned about fiberglass. Uh, okay, good. So you're pretty far along, Tech. You, you've already, they've already approved your deck plan. Good. And um, so, I mean, I have, I'm just going to share this with you, tech support. I ha I must have, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't know, five, ten columns on my website about how to build a deck, all the different things you need to know, all kinds of tips. I would start and I would read all those columns. Um, I have a bunch of videos uh, on, on my channel here on YouTube about when I built my deck that's right out the window that I'm looking at. And a shed, I built a shed up there, 16 by 24. Well, the entire floor of the shed is no different than building a deck. No different at all. If I were you, I would watch all those videos. That'll really give you a good head start on what to do. But you have so many options. I mean, you have to know, is, is your, you know, are you, are you going to have beams in this thing? Where are the beams going to be? Are they going to be under the joist? Are they going to be in the same plane as the joist? Um, uh, you know, how, what are you going to do about your peers? You know, all that. I, I have all those videos on the website. So watch all that. And then if you still need help, uh, you know where to get it. Um, I can, I'm happy to help you. If you have any questions uh, about anything else. So Tech had some really great questions. Rob, great about the doorknob. That's fantastic. Uh so Rob says it's 45 degrees in the building. So I kind of want to insulate the sides and top of the interior door to my office in which I heat with a space heater. Um, well, you, um, you can do that. It may cross over, like I said, into a consult. Um, you know, I, I'm, sh I'm sure you understand how I have to be respectful of my time that I invest in stuff like that. So um, it's up to you, you know. And here's the best part. Um, if you do one of those console phone calls from there, if you're not happy, if you're not happy with the information and you don't think it's worthwhile, you just email me at the end of the call and um, we refund your money. So it's satisfaction guaranteed. Okay, so a sliver, sliver 760. Hi, how you doing? Uh, how to seal the cracks and bricks after foundation issues? Well, that's a great question. So the number one thing to do so you don't waste time is you need to make sure that the foundation foundation issue has been solved. Um, in other words, it's kind of, it's kind of stupid to start patching the brick. If you think the foundation is going to continue to move. Once you're done with that, then you, you've got a couple of choices. I have some really interesting columns on the website about how to match the mortar. Most people really goof up. 
They don't understand how to match mortar. And I have columns on my website that show you exactly how to do it. And uh, they're very, very, it's really, it's, I, I, I'm going to say it's simple to do, but it takes just a little bit of work and most people aren't willing to do it. Uh, the first thing, the, you know, if you really want to match the mortar, when you go to make repairs, you actually have to mix up a batch or two of this test mortar. You have to lay a couple of test bricks. You can get some cheap brick at, um, you know, at a brickyard. And you have to wait maybe two weeks, and then you're going to lightly acid wash it. I've got all the instructions in my columns. And you're going to see if you get a good match. But I tell you that the key to matching the mortar is you got to get the right sand. I mean, that's the thing. In other words, go look at the mortar really closely and you'll, uh, you, you know, like mortar that's been up there for 30, 40, 50 years, you'll notice it's not all one color. And when you look really closely at mortar, you're going to see all the different colors of the individual pieces of sand. That's really important. Go look at my, col I've got some great photos of this on my website. Uh, just, just go to askthebuilder.com and type into the search engine, matching mortar, matching mortar. We're getting some great questions today. I love it. Uh, Frederick, you say floor joist on an old house over 100 years old look wider apart. How would you brace them? They bounce in some places in the house. Well, um, so that's the problem is I don't have enough data to really give you a great answer. Um, one of the things in, in the old days, what we did, and for some reason they've gotten away with this, and, and I think it's a huge mistake. If you go look at old buildings, um, we would put cross bracing in between the joists. Like I'm trying to hold my hands up. Two pieces of wood that like the top of my fingers up here, that's touching the top of the floor joist. And then these, the bottom of my finger would extend about an inch above the bottom of the floor joist. And this cross bracing, this diagonal bracing, uh, you would do different rows depending on what the span of the joist was. But what that does is that transfers the load that's on one joist to the joist next to it. And you keep transferring and spreading the load out across the entire floor. And for some odd reason, th this is where, this is a great example, actually. I should write a column about this. This is a great example of why I get upset at the building code. Because this used to be in the building code. And then for whatever reason... The code officials think it's a smart idea to take it out. Well, they're in this case, they're wrong. It, they're big time wrong. Uh, you, you, the cross bracing is a great idea. So you can, you. It's hard to install the cross bracing after the fact, but it can be done. Uh, the other thing you can do, typically, that and this is much harder to do, is it's almost like you have to put another beam underneath these floor joists if they're springy, and that might not be possible if it's if it's you know, in a room downstairs, or it might be hard to do in a crawl space. Um, it's really, I just need a lot more information. Might be, this is another great example of why my 15 minute phone call, I'm going to give you that link to that, by the way, uh, if that my 15 minute phone call is such a good idea. I do many, many, many of them. And um, in all the years I've done these phone calls, just so you know, I've only person asked for a, a refund. <laughs> and it's because uh, this person um, was expecting me to train him over the phone about how to install a uh, flashings on a metal roof. <laughs> so, so, um, and I even went to all the trouble to make a video for him and he still wasn't satisfied. It's crazy, it's crazy that you can watch that video on YouTube. I made that video just for this guy. That shows you how it's really hard to satisfy some customers. He he just felt like I didn't tell him give him he didn't feel like I gave him enough confidence to do the job himself. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna get caught up on the comments. Um, you got how about hairline silver sliver says how about hairline cracks on the actual brick? Well. What I would probably do with those tiny little hairline cracks, I would be inclined to really carefully, and that's really hard since it's hairline, um, to fill those, you have to do it really carefully. Fill it with a caulk, um, 
a really, really high performance caulk and you have to wipe it with a sponge to make sure you don't smear it in the brick. And if the brick's a rough brick where you'd smear it, you got big problems. And then if you're able, if it's a smoother brick and you can do this, you can caulk it very cleanly. Then a two, two, or, two or three days later, you would take a brush just like this, a really, really fine artist brush and very carefully, you know, paint the caulk, just the caulk only, the same color as the brick. Not easy, but that's the only way I know to do it. Rob says, one small doorknob difference was that uh, one of the two latch screws is turning. And so, yeah, well, that's because you need to, the hole was too big and you should have glued in, you should have taken some carpenter's glue with some toothpicks, glued, it, filled the hole back up with wood and uh, come back two days later and put the screw in. That's all you had to do. Uh, I've got, I've got an ebook about how to do that. Uh, you didn't install the new strike plate, and I used one of the long strike plate screws on the latch. It tightened it so well, I think it was a good solution. Uh, might have been a good solution. I don't know. I'd have to see it. If it's tight, then I think you've got the answer to your question. Um, it's a newer building. Don't have cross bracing. Yeah, too bad. Uh, yeah. Well, it might be. The trouble is with the cross bracing, it's really hard to get to secure it at the top. Really hard. I mean, it's so it's so easy to put the cross. When we put cross bracing in, we do it. We we set the floor joists first, then we come through and put the cross bracing in. We just nail it at the top only. We don't nail it to the bottom of the floor joist. And and you never on a cross view. Just let me show you with my fingers. You never want the cross bracing to touch. You have to have a little space between it, like I have with my fingers, because you never want the cross bracing to rub against one another as people walk on the floor because it'll cause a squeak. But you have to just nail the top and, and they just kind of are flopping there. The cross bracing's flopping. Then you have to put your plywood in and, and you know get the proper 16 inch spacing, nail all your plywood, get that all done, glued and nailed. Now the joists aren't gonna move. Then you go down to the basement or in the crawl space and finish nailing the cross bracing to the bottom of the joist. That's how it's done. You're welcome, Sliver. Andrew, whatever the thumbnail is, that is not how that job is supposed to be done. It looks messy. Yes, that's because, that's a great comment. Um, if you go, uh, let me let me share the URL to the column and you need to read the caption for that uh, photo. That's a really great comment. Um, I did that as a test. So go here and uh, go to that column and read the caption. It's right at the top of the page. And then come back and tell me what you think. That was that photo was taken at my own home. And so I, I used my home uh, as, a, as a testing lab for a lot of things. And I, I did that in a certain spot where I knew it wouldn't bother Kathy. Um, you know, that was not done in the middle of the patio, the brick patio, because she would have never accepted it. So I did it off somewhere where it was out of the way, where I could cover it up if I had to, and it didn't bother her. But I, I did that as a test. And um, so after about two or three years, once the test was done, then I went ahead and used some acid and cleaned it up. So that was a great, great, uh, great, um, great comment, Andrew. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, if you have any other questions, love to hear them. These are great. Everybody's got great questions today. These are all wonderful. Ah, oh, I just love it. Let me get a drink while I'm waiting for you to type. What else did I want to share with you? Oh, I have a teaching moment. <laughs> I, um, this guy didn't get back with me. He didn't get... I thought he'd get back to me and complain, thinking that I was being snarky. But I have talked before about, even recently, uh, this is something that you need to know. It's And what I call it is um, that the power, this is a really interesting saying, that the power is in the question. Meaning when you ask a question of somebody, you need to ask the question in the right format um, because the, 
because someone could answer the question correctly and but you not get the information that they want. So here was this person's question. And um I I just um I can understand why he asked me this because he might think that I'm the ask the builder guy and that I just magically memorize incredible amounts of detailed information. So when I read this, when I read this question, you'll understand. His name was David from Rochester, New York. He companies make routers with the on off switch on the handle. So you, you you couldn't expect him to think that I would just drop what I was doing and just go spend an hour or two researching this, right? I mean, you don't you don't think he expected me to do that, do you? So that means that he then probably felt that I just am a router expert and would would happen to know this. So my answer was. <laughs> My guess would be several. So I don't think that's snarky. I mean, it's a very... And then he got back to me just um, a few minutes later and said, the only three horsepower router I find is the Makita. All right, so notice in the first question, he never said it had to be a three horsepower router. <laughs> see? See what happens? The power's in the question. He goes, the only three horsepower router I find is the Makita. Is there any others? So I answered him again, and I said, when you went to Amazon.com and looked at all of them, what did you discover? You know, and he hasn't responded back to me because hopefully he understood from that, you know, that um, I was trying to take him to the woodshed a little bit. I was trying to, you know, I see this happen a lot. Uh, I actually have this problem with a friend of mine. <laughs> um, I, He's a really nice guy, <laughs> but I, I don't know if it's laziness. I, I don't know. I don't, to me, I look at it is that I just think that you need to be more self-sufficient. I think many people need to be more self-sufficient. And when someone comes to me, like with a question like that, I just go, why would you have not gone to Amazon first or to some store that sells routers and just ask the salesman there. You know, it just seems like he's trying to get the easy way out. And so I I kind of bristle at questions like that. They just, they don't hit me the right way. In other words, I'm not this, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a busy guy, okay? I'm not that person. When, when you go to the airport, have you ever gone to a big airport and flown into a city for the first time? You come down, <laughs> you come down, you know, and, and you get towards the baggage claim area. And in many airports, there's a big desk and it's like information, you know, and there's people sitting there that can answer questions about just about anything. And, and I mean, what's happened is I think the internet, people just think that I'm that person sitting at my home for free, <laughs> just waiting for your question to come in. And all I do all day is just sit here answering free questions, not making any money, and somehow money just floats out of the sky to pay all the bills for Ask the Builder. So anyway, just like a mini rant there. <laughs> uh, okay, the weather, he finally answered from Northern Ireland. Weather was very windy. Yep, I would think that this time of year. If you have uh, any other questions, now is the time to put them in the chat. Love to help you. Um, love to help you, uh, but I, I'm not clairvoyant. I do not know. Um, I do not know what's on your mind. I don't know what's wrong at your home. So you need to tell me in the meantime, I have this to share. Um, I am going to be featuring next week. I think, um, a really interesting tape measure. I mean, really interesting. <laughs> I don't want to tell you any more about it. I don't want to give it away. But I, you can imagine how many tape measures I've looked at over the years. And you'd be surprised. There's a lot of difference in tape measures. But this tape measure that I got, 
was perhaps the most innovative one I've ever seen in my career. And what I did, I'm just going to share this with you. This is a live stream you don't want to miss, I'm telling you. So I looked at this tape measure first. You know, I, you know, the, the box was addressed to me. No one was around. I opened it up. I look at it, hold it in my hand, and I immediately go, this is pretty cool. And I, I open it up, and I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. So later that night, uh, we're getting ready for dinner. And my youngest daughter was here. And um, we've got a great relationship. And I just handed her the tape measure. She's really, really smart. And I just handed it to her and I said, tell me what you think of this. You know, that's all I said. I didn't want to set any expectations. And she, she looked at it and she immediately pulled it open and she went, oh my gosh. And this is the next thing she said, can I buy this from you? <laughs> all right. So then the ultimate test, like 20 minutes later, Kathy came up and she's really hard on stuff. I mean, like it takes a lot. It takes, I mean, it takes a lot to impress my wife, especially tools, because she doesn't care. I do the same thing. Just hand it to her and say, tell me what you think. Dear, I said, dear. She did the same thing. And her reaction was, Holy moly, this is pretty cool. You do not want to miss that live stream next week. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> hey, Lorreen, how you doing? Uh, Will, oh, no way. There's, it can't be 15 below zero there right now. Are you kidding me? Come on. It may have been that this morning. Let's see what it is here right now. I would predict right now where I am. It's uh, 10 or 12. Ah, oh, I'm off. Uh, 15 degrees. It's 15 degrees right now here in Meredith. And they just posted a winter storm watch, which is bad. All right. So that means that the it's going to advance to a winter storm warning. Sometimes, see, they have like what they call a winter weather advisory. And an advisory is when they don't expect much snow. Like I think the threshold is five inches or less. So it says... Um, this is bad because they say I'm reading it. Winter storm watching effect from Saturday morning through late Saturday night. Heavy, heavy snow possible. Total snow accumulations five to 10 inches. Winds could gust as high as 35 miles per hour. So, Will, you and I are going to get hit. I'm sure you've got the same winter weather advisory. Um, well, winter storm watch. So it's going to go, like I said, it's going to transform to a warning tomorrow afternoon. 8-bit um, vinyl. I love those Milwaukee tape measures that have huge stud hooks on it. Yes, they did. Um, yeah, right. I thought I thought 15 this morning. It was it was about eight below zero here. Um, okay. Lorene says, I'm leaving my daughter's eye. I know you. Well, Lorene, we've missed you too. <laughs> the feeling's mutual. It's it's just not the same when when um, you and Steve and Will and Shannon and Jason and uh, others are not here. I mean, it's it's still fun, but um, I just it feels a little bit more formal to me when I get questions from people that I, I don't recognize or that don't appear to be regulars. Um, well, so Lorene, what they say I, that's interesting. Be careful with that heavy snow. Uh, well. The I think what they mean with that, um, I don't think they mean weight-wise, because the temperature, what I'm looking at of the temperature during the storm, it should be really light and fluffy stuff, and there doesn't appear to be any rain involved. I think when what they mean by heavy is large amounts of it, um, thick, you know, deep snow. And that's really the word I think they should have used. I just think it was a bad, a bad adjective. And anyway, I've got the snow blower. I, I I shovel hardly any of the snow around here. I don't I don't shovel hardly anything. The the machine does it all. Eight bit vinyl says supposed to get one or two feet of snow over Friday night and Saturday. Get ready. Yeah. So where where 
what where are you at a bit vinyl what what part of the country are you in are you here in the northeast with will and i kind of interesting um anyway back to that tape measure i'm telling you you do not want to miss that live stream is all i can tell you it, it's uh I've said this before, you know, it takes a lot to impress me. I mean, it really does, because I've seen so much. And, uh, you know, and you would think, I mean, here's the thing. You would go, how could a tape measure? I mean, it's so, you know, what's the big deal? You know, come on. Well, when you see it, you'll go, I swear, I swear you're going to go, I want one of those things. I want one. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you. I'm just going to warn you. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, there's that crutch word. Anyway, and so what are your crutch words? Have you ever thought about it? What are the crutch words you use? Let's, um, um, Will says, guessing the tape measure requires batteries. I'm not going to answer that question. That's nice to know information at this point. Not need to know. Just south of you in Concord. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get one to two feet. I don't know about that. I Well, I haven't looked. Look who's here, Jason. Uh, but 8-bit vinyl. So what? look what happened to us last year. Well, I don't know how bad it was for you down in Concord. But if you remember Winter Storm Gale in December, um, the forecast here in Meredith was 16 inches of snow. We got 39 inches. <laughs> I've got all the pictures and everything on my website. Just go to askthebuilder.com, type in Winter Storm Gale, and look at the photo of my truck. I, I um, My truck was buried uh, by, the, by the storm. And so I decided, as I was uncovering it, that I was only going to uncover half of it. It's a pretty interesting photo. And, uh, and, and it what and, and some of the snow had blown off because it wasn't, Instead, it wasn't 39 inches of snow on my truck. It was probably more like two feet, maybe 28 inches. But some of it had blown off. But it's still a very impressive photo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I drove through Concord uh, two, two nights ago. I was driving through right about now, actually. Uh, yeah, right about now. I had left the house here about 4 o'clock. Takes me um, 45 minutes from my house to get down to exit 14. Uh, Lorene says it is 33 degrees right now in southeast Wisconsin. That's interesting. Uh, nine is, minus nine overnight at home. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's January. It's almost over. Here's what, you know, here's kind of some good news for what it's worth. And I, to, I'll be honest with you. I cannot believe how fast this month has gone. I, it just seems like yesterday it was January 3rd to me. Monday, it's going to be the end of the month. So January, typically here in New Hampshire, is the coldest month. So we're almost out of the, you know, a little bit out of the woods, a little bit out of the woods. And you can see each day we've got more light each day. We've already picked up about uh, almost 40 minutes, I think, for, from what it is at the solstice. So it's really, um, it's, it's, it's not, it's, you know, we're almost out of the woods. I mean, almost. I mean, the trouble is here in New Hampshire, Whew. I mean, winter, winter doesn't, it, winter lasts. I mean, it's six weeks longer than it was in Cincinnati. I mean, it'll, it can be cold all the way up to April 1st. No, no getting around it. Okay. Remember, um, <laughs> remember no live stream tomorrow. We're doing the zoom call. <laughs> So Lorene and Jason and Will and there's about five others. I hope you got the email. I hope you got the invite. If not, you better email me. You need to let me know that you got it, Rob. Oh, Rob, there's Rob. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing the Zoom call tomorrow at four o'clock. Going to be a lot of fun. And my understanding is what we have to do is I already know the call is going to go over. We're going to get cut off. I'll talk about it at the beginning. As soon as it's cut off. I'll send out another invite and we'll probably just get back on the call five minutes later. That'll give everybody a chance to hit the head, get a drink, whatever. So, okay, good. All right. 8-Bit Vinyl. I remember that 8 was actually overwhelming. It took 
Yeah, it was, um, luckily, luckily it was a pretty light snow. The biggest problem for me was because of uh, my roof at my front door. The, I have a photo on that page. You should really go to that page on my website. Just ask the builder.com winter storm gale in the search engine. The snow on my front porch was eight feet deep. <laughs> and it took my wife and my daughter, it took the, the three of us, um, I don't know, about four hours the next day. I think we worked a little bit on it the first day, but it took um, about four hours to get that all dug out. We had to dig out the whole sidewalk. And, and what we were doing is I just had a wheelbarrow and we would, my wife and my daughter would fill the wheelbarrow up and I would wheel the wheelbarrow down the sidewalk out onto the driveway, dump it off, just had a bunch of piles. And then eventually I took the snowblower and blew it all down the hill. But we had, you know, you can't get the snowblower back there. So you had to put all of that snow physically. You had to move that by hand. So, yeah. Um, anyway, it's winter. I can just tell you that I would never own another home like this. <laughs> you know, I, I never thought, well, first of all, I never thought we would be here as long as we did. This was supposed to be a transitional home. I, I was not supposed to be here, but I, I would never own a home that has this box canyon design where the snow comes off the roof. In other words, my porch is 10 feet. I have like a 30 foot long box canyon. Uh, <laughs> look at Will. Will used to work on, on the road, on the DOT, obviously. Yeah, I'll bet you don't miss that at all. I'll bet you don't miss that for a minute. Crazy, um, crazy. Uh, all right. Any other questions that you've got? I'm happy to answer them about your home. Uh, we have quite a few people. I, I really appreciate you turning into the live stream today, watching right now. If you have a YouTube account, remember that you can you can type a question about your home into the chat. I'm happy to answer it. Does not have to be about brick and mortar. It can be about anything. It could be um, plumbing related. It could be roofing. It could be anything, anything you want. Happy to answer you. Happy to answer you. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to, um, I haven't, the Builder Show is about to happen. Might be happening right now. I, 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 I'm not going to any more Builder Shows. Um, I, can, uh, I can tell you a story about that, why I made that decision. Uh, and it's loosely related to the, you know, the fact that, Tom Brady should probably be retiring. Ben Roethlisberger just announced his retirement. But um, anyway, uh, years ago, many years ago, probably 27 years ago, I went to my first editor's conference and really kind of cool events where companies invite members of the media like me uh, to a, a remote location. In this case, it was a beautiful resort and in uh, Clearwater Beach, Florida. And they, they do a dog and pony show. So they've got a captive audience. You know, they pay all your expenses to get there. And then they show you all of their new tools and things. And so there, there usually are about 20 or 30 of my peers there. And, you know, I was not the youngest, but I, I was in my 40s. And there were several older men there that were of the generation before me who were the basically the founders of the home improvement industry. The home improvement industry really didn't exist until after World War II. Anyway, one of the guys there was, he and I became really, really good friends. His name was Larry Isinger. Larry passed away about 10 years ago. He was the father of home improvement. And sadly, there's no... There's no uh, tribute to him online. I should probably try to write it. My mistake I made is he told me his whole history one day, but I failed to record it. It was just a story he told me, and I, I wish now I would have had a tape recorder on. So at this event, you know, Larry went to bed early. He was, I mean, at the time, Larry was probably in his late 70s. And that night, you know, everybody's outside at, down at the, near the pool, some of these younger guys, really brash. And they're, you know, they're kind of making fun of Larry. Like, what's that old, what's that old guy doing here? You know, what could he possibly know about home improvement? And they didn't know anything about Larry. And, and I didn't know much about him at the time either. 
but I came to know that he was really, really smart. But the point was, these young guys were making fun of this old guy. And as I flew home from that conference, I decided, I said, you know what? When I'm the oldest guy <laughs> to attend a conference or the Builder Show, I'm done. It's over. Because I don't want those young guys talking behind my back. All right. So I'm not going anymore. All right. LV says, uh, most people don't expect to live in their homes as long as they do, particularly if it's not their dream home. So here's a really interesting statistic. I got this statistic. I don't know if it's changed a little bit because of the shamdemic. Um, but back when I was writing this book, so I was I wrote this roofing ripoff book. You can get it for free. The link is way at the top of the chat. I had to do some research about how long the average person owns their home. I got the data from the National Association of Realtors. And at the time, which was about five years or six years ago, uh, it was eight to nine years. So eight to nine years is the average length of time somebody owns a home. All right, Rob, this might be a tough one. We have an outdoor shower and I have to shut off the outdoor water and drain the water before it freezes. Yep. If we get to this, Jared probably gets to shred. Yes, truth. Uh, any possible solution besides remember to turn off, turn off outdoor water and drain? Um, Rob, let me ask this question. Do you own one of these things? You know what this is? Smartphone? You know? Do you own, do you, um, let me look at this. So, um, you know what that is? So that's Google Calendar. And in Google Calendar, you can set up alerts. Uh, all right. So, um, so anyway, um, I assume you have a smartphone. So I assume you can go to, you know, it's an Android. And even if it's not Android, even if it's an iPhone, because there's a thing called iCalendar, you can set up all these incredible reminders in the calendar and you can make them repeat whenever you want. You know, so what I would do is I, you can actually go in and set up a calendar, uh, you know, reminder. I don't know, whenever you think you're going to stop using water outdoors, like November 1st, you set up a reminder for November 1st, and then you set up multiple ones because you're probably going to procrastinate. So you set one up for November 1st, November 4th, November 7th. And, uh, you know, it keeps letting you know. And, you, and then when you're setting it up and you just say, turn off or turn off the damn shower water, drain the head, whatever, blah, 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 whatever it needs to stimulate your head. And then um, you just set it up to repeat annually. And every November 1st, every November 3rd, or whatever you do, it's going to set. You're going to get these little reminders, man. None of this is hard. None of it is hard, man. None of this is hard. Um, not any of it is hard. Look who's here. Steve, how you doing? Everything is doing great, buddy. Uh, we're having a pretty good live stream. We talked a lot about brick and mortar. Um, are you ready for the Zoom call tomorrow is what I want to know. Are you all ready? Did you get the email? Do you have the invite? <laughs> I like your comment, Rob. That's an idea. I'll probably use the Echo because I don't use the smartphone often. But anyway, I cannot keep it off all winter. It's my only shower method. Wait a minute. You take a shower outside? <laughs> no. No way. Come on. <laughs> you can't be serious. Anyway. what? No. No, 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 no. No chickening out, Commander. We set the the whole Zoom thing was your idea, and we built it all around you. You're not gonna uh, you're not gonna bolt on us. Uh, I almost had somebody bolt on me one time. That would have been a big mistake. Um, and uh, <laughs> no bolting. No, no, no. It's gonna be fun. What in the world would you possibly be worried about? It's gonna be hilarious. It's gonna be a great time. Okay, good. You better be only joking. So. Um, Anyway, uh, okay, so anyway, um, 
I don't know what to tell you about the shower, Rob, because you, you're confusing me. Because you just said, you say we have an outdoor shower. So now you say it's a warm water shower at a business, no indoor. At night, it works fine. I, I don't know. Um, you're kind of confusing me, buddy. That's all I can tell you. Um, if you're not able to turn it off and let it be off all season long, then you need to make sure that the cold air can't get to the pipes. None of this is hard. Not, not, none of it is. None of this is hard. It's simple physics. You know, I'm not trying to scold you here. I'm just saying use the little gray cells up here and figure out whatever you have to do to keep the pipes above 32 degrees. That's all you have to do. Yeah, no doubt. Um, maybe Rob works at a car wash. I, I, I don't know, maybe. But typically what they do here in New Hampshire will, and I have a really good friend of mine, a subscriber on my newsletter that owns car washes up in Prescow, Maine. They just let the water run all the time. And I, I find it hard to believe it doesn't freeze up. I turn it off many times each winter. I'm going to write you about things. Yeah, you're probably going to need a consult call on this. It's it's way too complex. So your biz will pay for it. Just get them to pay for it. And um, no big deal. Uh, you know, once you send photos, whatever, I'm happy to help you. Uh, the My tooth is fine. My gum where the tooth was extracted. What happens though, you notice they put my finger in my, I've got a piece of gauze in inside my cheek right now. For some odd reason, over yesterday, I don't understand why this is happening. I don't, I don't get it. But I started to bite the inside of my cheek, you know, back there. And, you know, now it's kind of swollen. And then as I talk, it keeps getting worse because I keep, as my teeth go up and down. So I thought, okay, this morning I thought, I know how to solve that. I'll put a flipping piece of gauze inside my mouth to keep my cheek away from my flipping teeth. So that's, I was just adjusting it. So it's a little gross. I'm sorry about that. Um, anyway, crutch word. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a trailer, trailer buildings on about 60 years. Yeah, it will. We talk, I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Like, you know, Kathy was kind enough to remind me and she's right. Uh, our bodies are really interesting, the human body, because when you get an injury in the mouth, um, our bodies are programmed to heal that really fast, really fast, because we can't afford not to eat, <laughs> you know, can't afford it. Like, you know, we have to it's like, hey, all right, you know what? I'll give you a break for 48 hours. But man, you got to we got you got to feed me. That's what the body is saying to the mouth. And uh, so, but it, the, as far as the, um, where the wisdom tooth was, no, no dull pain. Just a, actually, it's just like a minor, if I had to rate the pain right now, I would, well, I would rate there's no pain. I mean, it's just that I can, I can just feel that there's just a very little difference. Um, I'm sure, I don't know how long it's going to take for the gum to completely heal over. I, I, you know, it's funny. I didn't ask the dentist that. Um, I'll have Kathy look at it this weekend, see what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I bite my cheek sometimes too. I, you know, and I have to wear a mouth guard at night to stop grinding my teeth. So anyway, too much information. I know, I know. Um, all right. So, um, I'm going to mention this real fast. Maybe we can talk about this a little bit. What, um, so Steve and Will, and I know Jason is here. I saw Jason before. Um, what, and and if you were here, like, I don't know, if you're here and I apologize if I'm not connecting your, your screen name with someone who is going to be on the Zoom call. Right now, there's only seven or eight people are going to be on it. Um, how do you think, excuse me, share with me how you think we should do the Zoom call? I'll tell you what I think, and then um, just let me know, because I know you. they don't give you a lot of characters to type. Um, I think that we should open it up and just kind of go around in a circle, um, 
and every everybody just kind of do their two minute elevator speech. So if they do that, that's going to take up 15, 20 minutes right there. And I do mean two minutes, you know, just like, this is who I am. Uh, this is where I live. If you want to share that, you can just be general if you want. I'm not looking for a street address. Um, just a very little bit about your background, whatever you want to share. Um, so that people get to get, so we get to know one another a little better. I, I just, I'm trying to figure out what to do because I, just so you know, on a personal level, I shared this yesterday. I, I, I want to talk very little in this Zoom call. I mean, I'll answer. But this is my opportunity to get to meet you. <laughs> I want to know about you. You already know about me. So that's so it's you know that that's my perspective. So I'm I'm. Uh, oh, um, okay, Lorene, um, The Zoom is really easy, super easy. Um, you're gonna love it. Um, Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you know, and everybody, just so you know, you have your choice as to whether or not you want to turn your video camera on. It's not required. You know, I'll have mine on, but it just, just that when you, uh, what you have to understand, you might want to watch, uh, if you're still here, Loreen, you might want to watch a video, uh, go into YouTube, watch a video. Uh, I'm sure there's one about how to use Zoom first time because Sometimes it automatically has your microphone off and it has your video camera off. So you'll be talking at home thinking all of us are hearing you and we're not. So you have to understand how to turn those, those things on and off. It's really simple, but that you just need to know for a first timer. All right. Safe travels, Lorraine. Uh, but anyway, let me know. Uh, here we go, Will. Ten, uh, so we're no one's letting me know about the Zoom call. So. Will says, to insulate my basement cinder block walls, I've got two inches strapping nailed to it. Added fiber insulation with facing out. Hope no mail boats up under the insulation. Well, um, it might. It might. I don't, um, okay, no problem, Jason. Uh, okay, thanks for being here. Uh, just, just jump into the Zoom call anytime you can. And um, I'll send out an email with that invite. But I think the invite, supposedly that same link will look work for the second call once we initiate it two minutes after the first call ends. So, Will, um, let's think about, here's what you always have to think about. The, I mean, you know how condensation forms. You're a smart guy. So by default, with you putting the insulation in, in between the strapping, you're not letting the warmer air of the basement, because it is in the ba yeah basement, uh, get to the cinder block walls. All right, so by default, that's going to make them colder, which means that condensation would form on the cinder blocks faster than it normally might. So that's the physics that's involved, and <clears throat> the. The um, what you may want to do is you may want to experiment with this. Like, in other words, um, I would be really tempted to just put first of all, what I would put in, you said you put in fiber insulation. So I, I would have actually put in two inches of closed cell foam, cut as tightly as possible so it fits in between the two inch, um, the, the, the wood. So I would have put closed cell foam, put it right in contact with the, because closed cell foam is, has got its own built-in vapor retarder. Water vapor will not go through closed cell foam. And you, so you have to stop water vapor from getting to that cinder block. That's what you have to do. So you can test it. You can um, maybe cover some of that insulation with, uh, a sheet of six mil visqueen for, from the floor all the way to the top. Uh, and don't put a million staples in it because you want to be able to pull it down a month from now and check to see if there's water back there. You know, I would, I would be constantly checking it. I can tell you that. Ah, um, so Steve wants to know what a cinder block. So that's a great question. So it's just like the breeze block that you talked to us about Steve a month ago. It's, um, 
years ago, it's a it's a funny term. So many, many years ago here in the United States, people still heated with coal and the coal would create cinders, you know, small pieces of, of that rock that, would, that didn't burn. And they would use this, those cinders to mix with, to make concrete. And a lot of people used it to make concrete block, which you call breeze block. But here in America, I, I don't know that Will has actual true cinder block. Uh, it's just a, it's kind of a slang term that that older people like like uh, Will and I might use. But normal younger people here in America will just call it concrete block because we just take concrete to make those block. Uh, yeah, so buying a FLIR to look around. Uh, but the FLIR... I, I'm just telling you, Will. I would, um, I would want to be pulling that some of that insulation back every, I don't know, once a week to check, see if you got moisture back there, see what's going on. Um, it's just simple. It's just simple physics. What's what's happening? I mean, if you don't want moisture, you've got to stop water vapor from getting to that concrete block, to the cinder block. Simple as that. Okay, so it looks like my idea for the Zoom call is what we're going to do because nobody gave another idea. So I think we'll just do that tomorrow and uh, we'll just let people take turns. And then I think what's going to happen is I think it's going to, people are just going to start randomly ask questions about things. You know, we'll have a lot more latitude. I, I, there's a lot of things, Steve, I'm interested in uh, about over there in London, in the UK, just so you know. Really, re I mean, I'm so happy that you're going to be on the call. I'm so happy to have met you to, to um, create this friendship and uh, to, to be a source of information, you know, from over there. Like I, I have another friend who lives in London, but he's um, I have a business relationship with him. So I, I don't feel comfortable at all talking about all kinds of other things. I, I don't want to ruin the business relationship. Um, anyway. Yeah, you're going to do a great job. I mean, I don't, I don't have any really pointed questions. That it just, I just think just really interesting things, um, really, really interesting stuff uh, about what's happening. You know, on a, on, 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 you know, to all of us about the shamdemic, and um, just really interesting. Uh, all right, any uh, we got, you know, you you may be a person watching the live stream that's not been here before. If you have a YouTube account, remember you can enter a question in the chat and I'm happy to answer it. Uh, it could be any question about anything. It could be anything about your home. Uh, you might even have a question, an odd question about ask the builder. Uh, I'm happy to answer that. Um, and um, I can, I'll just share this with you right now. We are hard at work uh, on ask the builder um, to make that website ADA compliant. It's a crock of you know what, but we have to do it. Uh, last week, we completed all that for Stain Solver. Uh, this afternoon, just so you know, I signed the retainer agreement with a Los Angeles attorney uh, to, to, to make this, this lawsuit go away. Uh, and, and we think that that's going to be taken care of in the next 10 days, that the, that the lady, this lady that's suing us is going to fold her tent up. You know, because she's going to get a, a threatening letter from the attorney that she does not want to get. She does, you know. Anyway, um, we have thousands of you. Oh, yeah, boy. Um, so do, does Nala like the snow? Well, Nala and Finn are both inside cats. Uh, the only time they've ever been outside is um, when they're in a carrier to go to the vet. So they don't, Kathy would never let them outside. They would never... I don't know that they would survive two days. I mean, that the, the um, you know, because of all the wildlife here, a coyote, a fisher cat, who knows, something would get a hawk even, you know. Um, yeah, thousands of years of history. Oh, my gosh. You know, like little things, like here's a really interesting thing. So when the Romans uh, had, had invaded Britain, the UK, and they built, what, Hadrian's Wall, I think. I know I've seen online that that you can still see that wall. You know, it's like a miniature version of the of the Great Wall of China. Uh, you know, like have you ever been to it? Have you ever, you know, you don't have to answer here, but I'm just saying, 
how much of the UK have you traveled and seen? Um, you know, what's the most beautiful place in the UK you've been? Um, you know, have you just stayed most of your time in London? You know, were you born and raised in London? Um, you know, because I don't, you know, I, I, I see some photos of, of the UK, a lot of photos from fellow ham radio operators. And I know the countryside is is just beautiful. You know, some of the some of the parts of the UK are just beautiful. So uh all kinds of really just interesting stuff. All kinds of interesting stuff. All right, remember if you are um ah <laughs> the Scots built the Hadrian's Wall. Isn't that interesting? See, I, I I thought the Romans built it. So what do you know? That's just great. I mean, all this little stuff I don't know. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, wow. Uh, all right. So um, what did I want to share with you? Um, so I brought you up to speed on stain solver. That problem should be should be gone uh, in the next 10 days, two weeks. Uh and then we're like I said, we're we're we we've got another week's worth of work easy on Ask the Builder. Uh, we're we're just marching through it myself and my virtual assistant, making each page ADA compliant. Um, and um, it's all little pesky things, not just stuff we didn't know. And but then what we're going to start on, just so you know. Uh, also today, I'll tell you what I did on Ask the Builder. I think I told you I subscribed about a month ago to a really interesting website called SEMRUSH, S-E-M-R-U-S-H.com. Very interesting website with all kinds of interesting tools. And it can do an analysis of Ask the Builder. And I had a, a total of, um, I'm trying to think, I don't know, 60, 70,000 backlinks. And I don't know, three or four or 5,000 of them were what they rate as toxic. I mean, they were bad links. I know I didn't cre I didn't link to these other websites. They linked to me, and Google doesn't like these other websites. So by default, Google thinks I might be, you know, that I might be associated with them. That maybe even I bought a link from them, which I did not do. I've never bought a link, and I have never accepted money for a link. I would never do that paid linking. It's, that's death on a stick. But anyway, today I disavowed about 4,000 of those links. So there's a tool that you use. You create this file. I uploaded it to Google. And so that should, it basically tells Google, like, listen, I don't know anything about these guys. And you can just get rid of all those links. I don't care about them. I don't want them. So what it does is it, it then will boost my what they call your authority score. So I'm hoping that happens quickly. And uh, the goal is, is to raise the traffic at Ask the Builder by a factor of five or 10. And so we're working on that. Um, I, I, you know, many years ago, I had a lot of traffic coming to Ask the Builder, but Google took a lot of it away. So I'm working to get it back. Um, yeah, exactly. It's guilt by association. It's horrible. So, so we're, so that's the big project I'm working on uh, this spring. Um, I, I've been kind of lax about it, but I got a fire lit underneath me the past month and I am going to, um, I'm going to try to bring Ask the Builder back to the, its glory days, if not better. Um, if you go to the shopping cart, for example, we, uh, my assistant two days ago made the shopping cart ADA accessible. It looks completely different. It looks really good, I think. So if you just go to shop well, I'll just give you a link to it right now. I got a link right here. Um, this is the link, you know, the, you know, those who want to consult call with me, this is the link that people set use. Oh, you know what I got to do tomorrow? I got to draw a plumbing plan for Jason, Justin. I just remember that. So there's the link to the shopping cart. Go look at it. It's, it's really clean. Um, should have done it a long time ago. Really a beautiful look. Uh, I did not get an invite to the Zoom call. Well, then that means that you might not have emailed me. So like yesterday, Shannon, uh, Shannon told me that he was going to go to the, my site and send me a message. He did not do it yesterday. So here's what you need to do, LV. You need to go here. Uh, I will show you exactly what to do. None of this is hard. None of this is hard. 
So I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to do this. I'm going to paste it in here. Um, you need to go to that page right there. And you need to fill out the form. You need to put in your name. You need to put in your email address. You need to make sure the email address is accurate. Double check it. And then you need to just put in the comment field. Hey, Tim, um, I'm LV and I want to be on the Zoom call tomorrow. If you do not do that, you're not going to be on the call. It's that simple. None, none of this is hard. So do that. Do it right now. Just go there right now. Just how hard could it be? It takes you one minute. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so anyway, we're working really hard. The next two, three months, I'm going to be just working every day, all day on the Ask the Builder site, revising old content, probably writing some new content. Uh, one of the big things I'm going to do, as soon as we make it ADA compliant, I'm going to finish this ebook that I wrote about a year ago. It, it's almost it's almost done. It's just got a very little bit left to do about sewer gas. And I'm going to debut this sewer gas book. And I'm going to give everybody a really great deal on it that's on my newsletter list. Um, and, and I think it's going to sell a lot of copies each day, you know, worldwide, because it's a worldwide problem. I did a consult about a year ago with a really, really, really wealthy young man, really interesting story. Um, this young man, uh, very, very wealthy. I, and I, I don't care about how much money he has. It doesn't mean anything to me. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Um, and he lived in a condo in Monaco, you know, that south of France, its own little country, and horrible sewer gas problem in his condominium. And to make a very long story short, I, I located what the problem was. He said I was the only person to have ever figured it out. And once I asked him a few questions, I got it. What happens in these high-rise buildings, it was a high-rise condominium, you know, very tall building. I think, I think it was 35 stories. The way that they're built, is that the condominiums, for all the obvious reasons, they're stacked in such a way, just like a hotel. I mean, think about being the plumber. Think about trying to get pipes and doing it effectively and affordably. <clears throat> so you try to stack everything up and make the floor plan similar <clears throat> so that the plumbing can all go down a big center chase. And that's what happened. What <laughs> The problem is many of the people in this condominium they don't live there year round. They might only live there two or three months a year. And that was one of my key questions to him. <laughs> and so while they're gone, the water in the traps evaporates. Sewer gas gets into the condo, their condo that's empty. They don't care. But that sewer gas leaks through crevices and cracks into that plumbing chase and then gets sucked into other condominiums. So I told him, well, it's really simple. <clears throat> you just have to have the, the facilities manager, you know, basically that's a fancy name for the building janitor, the people who take care of the building. They've got to go into all the empty condominiums. They just have to fill the traps. So they did that one day. I think it took them two days to do it. There were so many. And the guy got back with me and after about three days. He said the problem went away. Well, of course it went away. So so my sewer gas ebook has got a bunch of really cool stuff in it like that. It tells you how to fix it. So anyway, I'm going to, so look at that, two back-to-back -back crutch words. So anyway, I don't think it's ever going to go away. <laughs> the bottom line is, that's pretty much a crutch phrase. <laughs> the bottom line is a month from now or less, that sewer gas ebook should be for sale. You're going to get a special deal on it if you're part of my newsletter list. And uh, we're going to spend the rest of the time until the black flies come, make and ask the builder back in its glory days. Simple as that. Okay. Hour and 20 minutes I've been on. That's a long time. I'd say we close up shop for today. I've, I, I've talked about plenty of stuff. So no live stream tomorrow. Zoom call. We're going to have a blast. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I cannot wait. So uh, I'm not going to be wearing a black dress, though. Uh, we did this to my disabled brother's second floor bathroom. Says, okay, well, that I don't know what you do to it. Oh, you. I see what you're saying. You fill the traps 
regularly so there's no sewer gas. Exactly, exactly. I got it, Will. Got got it. Good, good man. Good man. I am out of here. Oh, oh, wait. One quick thing. This is big news. So I've been kind of dancing around this, but my youngest daughter got a job offer today uh, from a company that uh, they they fly. They, it's a private jet company, and they fly very wealthy people all around the world. She got a job offer today. I'm sure she's going to take the job offer. Um, I've kind of hinted to you that when she moves out, <clears throat> that I'm going to then move to a new location in the house to have a really nice studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert one of the bedrooms uh, up on the second floor to a, uh, a, a nice Ask the Builder live studio. And I'm going to um, buy a much better uh, camera and get some lights. So it's going to be, it should be a really, I'm going to try to really up the level of the uh, live stream here in the next month. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to uh, set up the background, you know, do some things, build, 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 uh, build a little background. But it's, I already know what it's going to look like. It's going to have a lot of nice, really, tools on it. I can tell you that. I am going to get out of here. I'm going to be here tomorrow. Not here. I'm going to be on the same setup. But I'm going to be doing a Zoom call with you, hopefully. And we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be wonderful to hear your voice. Uh, it's going to be, hopefully, wonderful to see you if you turn on your video camera. And uh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a wonderful time. I'm out of here. Thanks for being here today. Will, thanks for being here. Steve, can't wait to see you tomorrow. LV, uh, look at all the people that were here today. We had so many people. It was wonderful. I cannot wait till we get to 50 or 100. How are we going to handle that? The comments are going to be coming in so fast. I don't know that I'll be able to keep up. Uh, Will wants to know. No, she was not. She was not formally. She, uh, she went to a school in California back in November for a week of training and she did a online six week course. So she's been certified, but remember, that's why I went to Boston last week. I took her last Thursday. She did a shadow training. She flew on this private jet last Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday back to uh, Washington, DC. So she, she, she uh, got trained and she, now she knows what to do. She's got all those first flight jitters out of the way. Uh, she's, she's going to do fantastic. Uh, here's what, here's my prediction for her. And I've already told her this within five years, she is, she's not going to be doing this anymore. She will have been, she will have flown some very wealthy person who's a nice person. Not all of them are nice. Someone is going to really notice her skills. I mean, her, and she's going to become their private assistant. And I know of somebody, I used to work for somebody who was the personal assistant of Carl Lindner back in Cincinnati. He was a billionaire. And that's what, I hope I live long enough to see this happen. But my daughter is going to, my daughter is going to be traveling the world for, she's going to get paid, think about this. She's going to get paid to travel the flipping world to exotic, incredible locations that wealthy people go to. She's going to get put up in the nicest hotels. She gets to stay overnight and for a day or two in some of these locations while the wealthy person does what they want. And then the wealthy person has them flying back. I mean, it's crazy. It's can you, I mean, can you imagine that? That's what she's going to be doing. Um, so LV says my website is not just way too many ads also does not seem to be set up for mobile device. Uh, um, so the, pro I, the problem with the ads is I don't know of any other way to make the website available to you. So I'm open to suggestions. How, how can I make it more user-friendly and less ads and stay in business? So I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Tell me what you would do if you were me. In other words, if you were me, what would you do? Um, also you don't see it. I, I have not emailed you. How I, I can't email you because I don't know your email address. How can I email you? So you're confusing me, LV. You're confusing me. <laughs> um, you're not the first person to complain about the ads. Uh, and on mobile, 
it's a it's a pretty mobile friendly uh, template on from WordPress, but um, I, I check it all the time. It looks good on my Android phone. So LV, before I sign off, I I I have not emailed you because I don't know your email address. So I don't know how you expect me to email you. So let me check to see if you filled out the form before I sign off here. Um, let me see if you uh, filled out the form. Let's see if you uh, did what I told you. You were supposed to go to that page, put in your name, address, and email address. And I'm going to say, no, you have not done it because I do not. I have not gotten automatic email that says some new person uh, filled that in. So, LV, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. You got. I'll do it once again. You go to the Ask Tim page. It's this page right here. I'm going to try to copy it. Copy this link. I'm going to do it one more time for you. Um, nope, that's not it. That's not it. I'm trying to, nope. Let's see, get rid of that. I am trying to uh, get rid of, <laughs> I pasted something in that I don't want in there. I don't know how to get rid of it. So um, I am trying to I cannot get rid of this stupid. Here we go. Let's see if I can delete. There we go. All right. So hold on a second. We'll do it one more time. I'm here. I go this. I copy this link. I go back here. I go here. I type that in. I There we go. I see the link. You've got to go to that page, LV. It's the Ask Tim page. And there's that's the page people ask me questions. You have to fill out your name, your email address, and you have to just say in the comment area, I want to be on the live stream Zoom call. That's all you got to do. And then I'll do the rest. Okay. Um, thanks very much for being here today. And I'll be here tomorrow. Well, I won't be here. I'm going to be on the Zoom call. I'll be back here on Monday. I'm Tim Carter, and you have been watching Ask the Bu Ask the Ask the Builder. Ask the Builder on YouTube. I'll be here on Monday.